is one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson.
Hallelujah. Glory to God. We were created to worship the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I just love, 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 love that song. Amen. It just ministers so powerfully. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, God bless you all. Amen. On this afternoon, this is the woman of God, your host, Pastor Dawn. Amen. Hallelujah. Where we just want to come and to release a Shabbat on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm excited. I have breath. I woke up in my right mind. Hallelujah. I have the ability to move and speak and see. Hallelujah. And I'm just so grateful just for the small things of late. Sometimes we take so much for granted. Oh, my God, today. But we have come to decree a Shabbat for your shift. Hallelujah. For your change, for your renewal, for your restoration, people of God that the enemy will restore all that he has stolen from you for your release, for your deliverance. Glory to God. We have come to lift up a resounding hallelujah. Glory to God. Shabbat Saturday is about releasing a sound in the atmosphere. Amen. And everything and anything. Hallelujah that does not align with the purpose and plan of God for your life has to change. Amen. Glory to God. I have come this particular Saturday on Shabbat Shabbat Saturday, my God, today, because he is my father, Mm. our father, our father who art in heaven. He gives us the privilege of being called his Sons and daughters, hallelujah. He's the one who we can completely and fully trust, hallelujah. He's the one that we can lean on, people of God, particularly in this hour. The one who cares about all that concerns you, that concerns me. Our Father God, hallelujah, is available, is accessible. Oh, hear me real good. He says, come unto me, all ye who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, part of his name, which is his character, is peace, shalom. The word of God says that the peace of God that passes all understanding. That just blows my mind. I cannot wrap my mind around that. But the peace of God that passes all understanding shall mount guard over my heart and over my mind. Hallelujah. He gives us security and a unconditional love. His love towards us is long suffering. Oh my God. It is available and present, hallelujah. There is no cost, but the only thing is that he asks for you to receive him. Mm. And you know what? He even loves those who are referred to as sinners, my God, today. Because the word of God says that he would wish that no one, oh my God, would be lost. And his heart, his cry, is that he would wish all men to be saved. What an awesome God we serve. Oh, my God, today. The constant presence of our Heavenly Father is what gives us the strength and covering that we need in this hour, people of God. We were created to worship our God. Oh, my God, today. The Word says in Revelation 4.11, you are worthy, O oh Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. Hallelujah. You created all things, and by your will, they exist and were created. Well, hey, again, this is your host of Shabbat Saturday, Pastor Dawn, and that's what we do, people of God. And, and I just want to thank you for tuning in again on this very special Shabbat Saturday with 
someone who we have come to love and to just respect, a great deal of respect for the woman of God and honor her. Oh, my God. She, oh, she is precious. My God. She is our featured guest, the one and only Minister Michelle Wright. Are you with us today? Minister Michelle Wright is our speaker of the hour, amen, and she will be coming forth in just a little bit. But I want you to know that there is a great shaking in the heavenly realm right now. I mean, you can see it. Look at the news. Every day something is happening, amen. And we have been given the authority to speak and say something, to Shabbat our awesome God, our sovereign God, our powerful God. Oh, my God, today. And I want to encourage each of you that is listening on today because this is the day that the Lord has created and made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I'm just so grateful again for Minister Michelle Wright agreeing to come back a second time, hallelujah, to bless us. I don't know if she's on the line, if she's muted, please unmute her. But we welcome her on today here on Shabbat Saturday to inspire you people of God, to move in the realm of his glory, hallelujah, to receive a rhema word, a word that will move you. From that place of stagnancy, my God, today, a word that will inspire you, Mm. a word that will motivate you, a word that will change you in the name of Yeshua. So I am grateful. I am humbled by just the opportunity that we have on this platform with our producer, amen, of Elation Radio, Kimmy Kim, amen. We bless God for her. And most importantly, I do not take it for, you know, granted, amen, that you are here, glory to God. You decided to join us, glory to God. And I think it's it's of some significance because nothing, hear me real good, nothing happens by accident. I'll say that again. There is nothing in our lives that happens by accident. The word of God says, for I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Ha! Thoughts to do you good and not evil and to give you an expected end. Amen? Glory to God. So we can trust Yeshua. We can rest assured that he is with us. Oh, that he has us on his mind. Mm. And that his plans for us are for good. Amen. And I want to say this very special word because I feel inclined in my spirit to say it. That if there's anyone on this line that is contending with depression or feeling alone or isolated or feeling rejected, know that you are in the right place at the right hour. And that the spirit of God is going to meet you right where you are at now. Amen. And turn you around. Because you are of value. Hallelujah. Because you do matter. Oh, bless the Lord with me, people of God. Because, you know what? If you were the only one that he had to die for, he would have still gone to the cross. Just for you. Mm, 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 mm. Let that sink in. You know, he says, I love you with a everlasting love. I, I was listening to a song earlier. I don't know if many of you know it. It's called Everlasting Love by C.C. Winans. You should listen to it sometimes. The, the words are so profound. But there's one chorus that says that there is nothing and no thing that will separate me from him because of his everlasting love, I paraphrase. And and I think that this is something that the Holy Spirit wants to drive home to someone that needs to know that you do matter and that he has not forgotten you. Oh, my God, today. And that he loves you with an everlasting love. 
And can no devil in hell change his mind towards you? Amen. The devil is a whole lie. Glory to God. But know this, that he that had begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of his calling. Amen. Until he comes back for you and for me. Hallelujah. I think about the life of Joseph. And, and, and I'll let the speaker of the hour come forth shortly. But I think about Joseph, how he had to contend with individuals that were trying to defame his character, my God, today. He had to contend with the fact that people oh, forgot about him, left him in a place where no one would ever hear his name. But God, huh? the Spirit of God did not forget Joseph. Hallelujah. And he placed his name on the hearts of two individuals that were also in prison with Joseph. And they shared Joseph's name and his, oh, his God-given gifts with the king. And the king called him forth out of his place of bondage. Mm. You know, I know that the king of, of, Lord of Lords, the king of kings is trying to call some of you forth out of your place of bondage, that place that has you captive, whether it be in your mind or a physical disability. But know that the greater one does dwell on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And know also that there are more with you than against you. Glory to God. And also know that Yeshua mm, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Glory to God. Joseph was a man that lived, I believe, on purpose. He was so, oh God, razor sharp focused. In spite of all of the circumstances that he had to contend with, even, my God, the things that occurred through those who were of his blood, yet the man of God still believed God, and he still believed in the dream, the vision that the Spirit of God had given to him. His pain was not in vain. Amen? Your pain is not in vain, my God, today. Do you trust him on today? Do you trust him you cannot, these are not just mere words. Do you trust God? I heard an apostle say just recently, he was talking about those who were are, are martyrs in other countries, meaning that they would lay down their very last breath as opposed to denying God. And he said something, oh my God, it was so powerful. He said, to one of the individuals that was on the call. We have a weekly call, Bible study, at 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. Amen. Glory to God. And he said to one of the individuals that was in the audience, he said, I would allow myself to be martyred for you to receive your healing mm. from your mental oppression, my God, today. How many of us are willing to say that and mean it and not just say it because it sounds good, amen, but really have a conviction that we are well, my old we are ready and we are willing because we love my him Lord. that much mm. that we're willing mm. to be martyred. And you know what, people mm. of God, that time is coming where it will mm. be either you are say yes for God or you're saying yes for the enemy. Amen. Mm. But remember the yes that you give to the enemy is one that will lead to a eternal damnation. My God today. Mm. I want you to know that the spirit of the Lord hand was on Joseph. Joseph was doing the right thing. Mm. He endured Hallelujah. He understood the purpose of God for his life. Hallelujah. Such that so that God would get the glory. Whether he be in prison, in a dungeon, 
still God was going to get the glory. Hallelujah. And remember, he had gone through much persecution. Mm, 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 mm. How much persecution have you gone through for the name of Yeshua? That's a Selah moment, but I I digress. Amen. We are here today because of our featured guest. Amen. Minister Michelle Wright is with us. Hallelujah. The woman of God, the speaker of the hour. And we are so honored to have you with us, woman of God. Hallelujah. Woman of God, I apologize. Praise God for being here one more time. The Lord is truly good and worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We love you to life, woman of God, and we're so grateful for you joining us on this Shabbat Saturday. And I just want you to go forth now and encourage our listening audience and give them a rich word, a rhema word, a logos word that will change them, woman of God. You are released to bless the people of God. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God again on today. Truly, God is good and worthy to be praised. If it were not for the Lord, where would we all be? You know, we wake up every day thinking, hey, we woke up another morning. We're going to do A, B, C, and D. But how many of us know that our life, when it's truly in his hands, is in his hands? And we're honored when he can wake us up another morning. Before we begin, we want to go in prayer. We want to ask God to continually bless this great woman of God, Pastor Westbrook, and all that God is calling her to, and the Shabbat ministry on Shabbat Saturday. How blessed is that? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you thanking you and praising you for another day. We thank you for the opportunity to lift up your holy name, to allow you to come in and have your divine will and way as this woman of God has proceeded. And, Lord, we say thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Without you, we don't have life. We don't have our being, and we're not who we can be because you're not in it if you're not in our life. So, Lord, if there's a listener listening that is making a decision to come closer to you, would you draw them on today? Uh, I know you know their hearts, their minds, their spirits, their souls. Be with them. Lead them. Guide them and direct them, oh God. Lead and guide and direct my lips, my words, oh God, to be your words, that you be glorified and honored. We thank you for Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio and Magazine, and we ask that you have your divine will and way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, I am so extremely excited to be here again on today, not because it's Saturday, not just because it's Shabbat Saturday, but because it's a breath in my body I did not have to have, and we're all grateful to breathe. On today, 
hatred of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always, not some of the time, it always protects, always trusts, always hopes. Hallelujah. 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 It always protects, always trusts. Listen, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man or a woman, come on, it doesn't specify just gender, but it's reasons man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I am known, fully known. And now these three Remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Now let's go back and expound on what this word has said. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. I need you to hear this on today because a lot of us think love is something it is not. Love isn't what we feel, it's what the word says says it is, and that is what we are to live by. It talks, first of all, about if we have the tongues of men or of angels but do not have love, we just sound like we're just talking, 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 a resounding symbol, a clanging symbol. And if you have the gift of prophecy, you can prophesy somebody up under a bench. But if you don't have any love, integrity, any any kind of character with it, That's not what love is. You can have faith, the Bible says, that will move mountains, but if you don't have any love. What is the motive of our heart? See, recently I have experienced death in a whole new way. As a minister, we're often understanding we officiate services, we pray for families, we're hands-on with trying to help wherever we can as the Lord would lead if that's our assignment. But one thing I learned recently with a very close friend that was a brother to me in the Lord, there was love there. There was some sisterhood, brotherhood there with me and my husband and this gentleman. And when he went to sleep and didn't wake up, Love began to kick in. First, there was the love of God that he saw that his purpose had ended. It was my responsibility as his sister of another mother. Y'all better hear me today. Hurting and all to understand God's love for him was greater than I could imagine. See, there's a part of our lives. That God takes full control, first of all, over us, whether we accept it, we acknowledge it, he's there. And what I loved about this relationship filled with love, it was one we understood that we had calls on our lives. It was one we understood we had vision and purpose, and we always said we would do it together. And as he began to talk about how he saw what the Lord saw for my husband and I, then to not wake up, I had a little hurt in my heart. I didn't first understood until God brought me back to what real love is. What am I saying? On today, I want you to not take for granted another day with a loved one, with a family member, with even your enemy, because tomorrow is not promised, but love endures throughout all generations. 
So not only did he pass, but I was given the task to help plan his services. So love then had to kick in and begin to reveal to us who he really was and be able in a time frame, y'all better hear me today, express his life that he's lived all his life in that short span of time. What is it that God is calling you to that love has to kick in, that you have to examine yourself, examine it, and be able to fully rise to the occasion to example love and not just talk about it? In doing that is where I found how much my daddy in heaven loves me. Because, see, it took my daddy's strength to be able to plan the service. It took my daddy's strength to be able to adhere to what my brother had said that he gave him to tell me and my husband and to be able to understand how brief time really is. Some of you may be planning uh, planning your retirement, and you think, hey, when I turn 62, when I turn 65, I'm going to retire. I'm going to say to you today. Whatever God told you to do, do it. Whatever he said for you to build, build it. Whatever he said for you to go forth and do, be about your father's business, research it, put it together, look at it and say, God, I have my yes, and do it. Why? Because time is not promised to any of us. So we go on, and the services are beautiful. People come in from everywhere, showed me, and this is another thing. The love that you have in your life will be examined when you leave here. Nobody has to make it up. Nobody has to bring it to a position of somebody trying to say this is who you were. Love will reveal itself. What's love got to do with it? Well, had he not loved all of his students and family and those that came, the church wouldn't have been full. And then we do know there are spectators, but those are not the important thing. The important thing is the aftermath that after you're gone, what essence would fill the earth because you were there? Love took over the room. Love revealed itself. Love gave people hope after he's gone to continue to do what they're called to do. Now, let's flip that to God. What kind of love did he give us that when we were yet in our sin, dirty, filthy, unclean, not a right mind at all, didn't want to serve him, wasn't going to follow him, and he still said, I see something beautiful in you. Somebody need to hear that today. Love will see something beautiful in you when other folks see something dirty, unclean, not right, maybe not ever going to get right. His love comes in and he washes us clean, makes us white as snow, put us in right relationship when we say yes to him. And all that that happened before you got to know him just somehow, some way gets wiped all the way and he comes in and when he comes in, oh, there's a change in your life. And listen, even somebody that don't like you have to say how wonderful God has been. What's the love got to do with it? It's a complete change in your life. It's a yes instead of a no. It's a I will follow you no matter what it costs. Well, let's talk about love. As soon as my brother was buried on Monday, in the midst of planning his service, I had a cousin who was in hospice. She Tuesday went on to be with the Lord. And all I could see in that room, in that space at our service, is how much love was given in her life. And God began to talk to me about love. We all serve him with love. But pure love from God will help you to oversee wrong. It will help you to help people not hurt them. Even when they get hurt, when truth comes to them, because you may have to tell them, there's a love that resonates that they can't help but say, that's true. And that love will bring about peace. 
When you operate in pure love, God gets all the glory. Why? Because he loves you, and his outcome is love. When you think about the worst person that ever offended you or hurt you, i got to give you a new flash. God loves them. And when he loves them, what offended you, what hurt you, and where they were and how they were, I want you to remember what it was like before you got to know him. And real love would cause us to pray for our enemies. The Bible tells us, pray for those that despitefully misuse you. Bless those that curse you. These are outcomes of love. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's going to be easy, but I am going to tell you if you operate under biblical principle, you'll see a different result. Am I going to tell you you're not going to hurt? Am I going to tell you you're not going to cry? You may. But at the end result, when God gets through working on hearts, like he worked on ours, there's something that will come out of a person, no matter how it seems they were so mean and so evil, when love appears, it disarms them. When we talked last time about Joseph, and I heard my sister mention that, Forgiveness is key because forgiveness isn't always for the other person. It's really for you as well. And when you release and let go, you can heal and you can breathe easily. Love comes in. And love will allow you to be everything opposite of what the enemy wanted you to be. I want to encourage you on today. No, he's working it out. If you let God have his way and come into real relationship with him, it's going to be some heartache. Because after Tuesday, when my cousin died, that Wednesday morning, my older sibling's mother died. We are yet still working on those relationships if we can be transparent. But love brings you closer to people then pushes you apart. You have to learn to pray and let God have his divine way. When you allow him to have his way, he gets all of the glory. He gets all of the glory. So we just give him glory on today. And we're praying. And I understand this must be a powerful word because I understand it's been breaking up. But I want to give you a word to encourage you to keep going forth. Let me know if you can hear me because it's important. Somebody needs to know to love and forgive on today. They need to understand that the kingdom is coming and he's doing great and mighty things. That love is more important than the things the enemy will put in the way. Because your love can deliver a generation. Love, grace, mercy, heals, accepts, and helps. I want you to be encouraged on today that 1 Corinthians 13 is real. We can do everything in this world, but if we don't have love, it's not going to be a blessing. It's not going to help us. It's going to put us in a position of being stagnant in life. You can be moving all around and still be still and don't even know you're being still. God loves you that much to say how much he loves you. He went through hell for you. He took the keys to prove to you he is God. And there's nothing so horrendous that you can do that he can't save you from, but it just requires your yes. It requires your saying, Lord, give me you. That love that he went through, those stripes on his back, the things that he endured just so you could have eternal life was important to him. Or he wouldn't have done it. God has outcomes when it comes to love. When it comes to love, he makes a way out of no way to get to you. 
If he has to send a Christian laborer across your path, if he has to allow something to happen, some things that happen in life, we think it's all against us, but it's really working for the good. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 28, and we know all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. It's working for you good. The love that he has. It's working for your good. No weapon formed against you will prosper. But it does require an admittance of wrongdoing. It does require that you go to him and have a mind to be willing to change. That his love will come in and overtake you. And it will lead and guide you to where you need to be. We know life happens. I'm a witness. Three deaths back to back. I'm a witness. But in each of them, I learned something greater than I ever learned before. Love is powerful. Having love or giving love, receiving love, all of it is important in this life. So I encourage you to love your family and love those especially that right now, think of all the relationships that seem to have been going south or they don't seem like they're working out. It doesn't mean you have to be with them, but you do have to love them. If you're going to see the Lord, you're going to have to love them and pray for them, even if it doesn't require your presence. And if you live biblically, God will get the glory and the honor, and he will be exalted because nothing can stand against love. We see it all the time. We see it all the time. We have to be intentional when it comes to love. We have to be willing to go through the hurt and the pain. Jesus went through it. Sometimes I truly believe we believe because we're saved. Things are just going to be the way they are. But God, I am intended to let you know today. Is working it out for the good. Just even in all the breaking up, I've been told it's been going. Listen, God has a word. He'll get to someone through the airway. And we commend the airways to be still, that he gets the glory and the honor, because truly he is worthy of all the praise. I want to talk to you. If it's you, know he loves you. For me, I know he loves me. For my sister, Pastor Westbrook, I know he loves her. And listen, the gifts and the talents he's given you is all for his glory. Someone is going to need to hear how wonderful he is. Why not be you? Why not God choose you? I know you said, oh, maybe I'm so messed up. Messed up ain't got nothing to do. Nothing to do with what he has for you. Your position with what you feel is your messed up self to be your blessed up self, because only he can come in, heal, deliver, and strengthen, and show you what true love is all about. I pray you're encouraged on today. Everything don't always have to be bad, and everything don't have to be, it's something wrong. But if we truly want to know God in the fullness of who he is, we must, as Christians, examine ourselves. We can't just always feel like we're just right all the time. I want to know that I'm in the hollow of his hand and that I'm being blessed because he understands. The Bible says there's no good thing in the flesh. Why would we think just because we go to church we're good? No, we got to look in the mirror, as the Bible said. We got a reflection in the mirror. Come on now. But in my heart, That's right. I want to know that I'm right. I want to know that I'm right. I can't chance that at eternal salvation and lose it all. So let's just be who we need to be every day. Trust his will for your life. Trust that he loves you. Trust that he's making a way out of no way for you. Love your family. I know they can be difficult. But guess what? At the end of the day, so were we. And he took a little more more time to sprinkle some blood over us that we would show the enemy every time he comes to accuse us that he is God. And there's nothing you can tell your God 
Not an enemy can come to him about you. We got to be that way about each other in the body of Christ. We got to learn to plead the blood over our family, over our ministries, over our lives, over our communities, that God gets all the glory. That is what love has to do with it. That is pressing in the midst of pain. That is when you think it feels right, it's not about our feelings. You ever been really, well, it's sacrificial for love? Where you really know within you, you just physically or couldn't emotionally do it, and God said, do it. And you did it, and God got all the glory. That's what real love is. So when you think about what we just experienced on Valentine's Day, some people call it love. I call it the love day because, see, it ain't really all the roses and the candy. Some folks don't have someone in their life. Don't mean they're not loved. I need you to understand today, if you say who you loved, if you're not with someone or someone didn't give you roses and candy, God loves you and so do I. Love has everything to do with it. You're precious. You're beautiful inside and out. And God has purpose in you. That's what love has to do with. And that's what I want you to remember. The next time that day comes around and the enemy may attack. 
You are the epitome of love, and we thank you for it. Now, God, go with us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. We admire you. We love on you. We appreciate you for who you are in our lives. And we ask you to have your divine will and way. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I know that we've had some audio issues. Yes. And, and I hear an echo. I, are you on Bluetooth or are you on your speaker? No, I am on my speaker. Okay, that's probably the problem, amen, because it's been breaking up and it's been difficult to, to hear you. But to God be the glory anyway. Hallelujah. Because I know that what you were sharing was very powerful. I've just been praying yes. over the airways in the name of Yeshua. You're still breaking up like you're an official. Even the yes. people, and I hear the breakup like too, a, and I'm off a speaker. I hear it too, but God gets all the glory. Amen, 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 amen. I Can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Mm-hmm. Okay, praise the Lord. People of God, I, I like what the woman of God shared, amen, particularly when she talked about Joseph and how this love, the love of God, that's what we're talking about today, amen. And she came amen. from Corinthians 13. That's so much better, woman of God. First, yes. you know, Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, amen, and you describe. I think that that's, that's the epitome of what, what yes, love it is. is. I mean, it's so eloquent and so profound and and, yes. and it, it just sums it up so eloquently that love is patient. Yes. Love is kind. Come on. Oh my God, today. Love is kind. It does not yes. envy. It will Mm-mm. not what expose. It covers. It does yes. not boast. It protect mm, mm, mm. it is not proud it does not dishonor Come on. oh my god today i think i remember posting something that if you say if i say if you say if any of us say that we love someone yeah that we would not we have no evil thoughts towards them we would not even put our mm-hmm. mouth on them and we mm-hmm. would what we would would support them we would Yes. Uh, show up for them. We would fight for them. Amen. Come on. If we heard someone else dishonoring them. We would not mm. what dishonor them mm. because we're not self seeking. Mm-hmm. We're not we're not easily angered. Mm. We don't keep a record of a wrong. Hallelujah. This this I tell you that that scripture itself, especially verses one through three. It, I think it just shows the preeminence yes, it is. of love. Mm-hmm. That love is greater. Mm-hmm. Love mm-hmm. is greater than any mm. of our spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. Mm-mm, Hallelujah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And then it, you know, it goes on to show that the practice of love, that it's greater. Yes. Hallelujah. That we have to be selfless. And I was yes. sharing with the listeners earlier about the martyrs in China. Oh, my God, in China. Mm. Mm. And, yes, God. And what's going on there with the coronavirus? Yes. Amen. Yes. And how they're not, you know, they're they're. I've been hearing testimonies that they're not getting sick, and mm-hmm. so people are coming to them and asking for prayer. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, today! But yet mm-hmm. they're being martyred in droves mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of their testimony. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. But woman of God, yes. thank you so much for coming today. I know that ain't nobody mad but the devil. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. But but yet I think we're gonna have to have you come back. Yes, and, and we'll do, be glad and do a do over. A do over. Yes. Amen. Not, Glory to not God. A problem. Because what you we said was God. just so powerful. Especially about the testimony of how you had yes. to step up and do the service yes. for your, your friend, yes. oh, my God, who you love so dearly. Yes. And the testimony yes. of his life, of those yes. who he touched, amen, my even God. after his death, my God, today, mm-hmm. hallelujah. Mm-hmm. And like you said, love will reveal itself after you are gone. Mm. That's it. I, I, I have to your, write that it down. It is that your is funeral. Mm. Yeah, yes. that is your funeral. Either you Amen. loved or you didn't. Mm. 
My God. And, you know, I really want to add this, too, if I may, real quick. You know, yes, as yes. you know, uh, my husband has been ill. And let me tell you something. This is a daily battle I have to go through. I can't preach and teach about something I'm not familiar with. Not only do I love him, but there have been so many changes in our lives. And that means there are a lot of things that stress or things that seem. But what I've learned in this thing is this. Love outweighs. Any problems, any issues, anything. I just keep saying, oh, that's a done deal. Uh, and I know he thinks, man, what is going on with my wife? Does she not see me in this condition? I see the power of God. I see love all over him. That God is calling him to a different place. His body is not what it looks like because that is not him. But yet who he is is the inner man. And the inner man is coming out stronger and stronger. That's what love is. It's not just physically. And I do believe that's something that all couples getting married, we hear something for better or worse. Y'all better wait on it because it's coming from us. There is something greater than when you walk down hole and then something happens in the marriage. Are you really in love? Can you really say Come on now. Come on now. It's difficult, but it is doable. It's difficult, but it's doable. And if you let Mm. God lead you, you can do it. And if you allow him to come in, you'll see, you'll grow so much. I've learned so much about myself in this process and the things I didn't know I could do that God gave me strength to do because he knew I was willing. I want to encourage the listening audience, always be willing. It may not be what you fathom, but God's purpose is far greater than what we think. Amen. Amen. I I reflect on my my brother, amen, Bishop Elect Darrell Pointer, who suffered a stroke, was found three hours later. He was supposed to be mm. dead. But God, oh my God, but God. how the Lord is slowly restoring his body and my, his my, cognitive my, my. ability and his speech, my God, today. But Thank the you, Jesus. one thing I see and I mm. just blows my mind. Is to mm. see my sister-in-law. How she said, yes. "I did not marry him because of yeah, what he could yes, do. Ma'am. I did yes, not marry ma'am. him because of how he looked. I did not marry him because of what he had. Come on now. I married him because I saw his heart. Yes. I could see that and he loved, loved me in spite of yes. all of my frailties and and my faults yes. and my my own struggles. He loved mm. her unto life. The role mm. of a man of God, the role mm. of a godly mm. man. Mm. Mm. When he says mm. he loves mm. his wife, he covers her yes. in ways you better say that it. we do not know. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm. I, so I hear you, woman mm. of God. We can wait. Mm. We can wait. Mm. Hear us, single women. Mm. Wait on the yes. man of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Mm. And even in this condition, it's still good. You better hear me. Even in this condition, it's still good. Talk about it. Because it's deeper than physical. You can have all the physical you want, but if it isn't love there, you're not going to make it. We're 23 going on 24 years strong this year. Nobody but God. He saw it all, and he knew it all. And I'm so grateful that he... In the marriage, he was the marriage. He made sure it was secure and glued with his will and his word. And so I take joy. I I stepped down from a lot of things to take care of my husband because all the money in the world ain't gonna get you joy. All that is not gonna bring you love. And at the end of it, we have to account for our actions. So we need to really make sure before we want to run down that aisle and say, I do, that the heart and the mind is solid with God, that come what may. It's not just mimicking off something. You got to live that thing. So I thank God for you, woman of God. I bless God for you on today. Amen. God bless you, precious woman of God. I mean, that you brought forth marriage is covenant. It is a covenant. Hallelujah. <laughs> Not just two people coming together, but something that has been ordained of God. Ooh, yes. Jesus. 
my God, today. Yes. I love you to life, and I'm so grateful for I you coming you. on this broadcast today. We're going to have you come back because you got to do a redo. Amen. Amen. Those that, you know, the, from some of the broadcasts was interrupted, but we thank God that we have the yes. ability to come back and bless the people of God. So, people, of yes. God, do not doubt what the Spirit of the Lord has released on this day. Amen. Or what Amen. he is going to do for you. And for us in this season regarding your relationships, we are at our place of victory in terms of our love life, our love, our love towards one another. Oh, my God, today. You know, it's not just words. Yes. It's a life. Yes. My God, today, hallelujah. Father God, I thank you that you will demonstrate your mighty deliverance in this word that's been released in this hour. And, Lord, we shabbat you because we have an expectation of a great word of God in the lives of the hearers, Lord God. Let that word go and go, my God. Let it be soil, let it mature and grow, Father God, and bring forth a harvest in the name of Yeshua. Let that word, hallelujah, continue to minister to them and speak to them as we decree and declare, hallelujah, there will be the manifestation because of the word that has been released. Father God, you are almighty God and all-knowing, and we align ourselves to be in position to receive, Lord God, as a result of the word that has been released in the airways. Mm. Let there be healing to relationships, oh, my God, today. Let there be deliverance, oh, God, in the house that there is contending with each other and there's a lack of love or they are selfish, oh, God, by the works of the enemy in the name of Yeshua. And we thank you, Lord God. Loose the spirit of love now, of God, in the name of Yeshua. We thank you that you said your love, your love, love, love covers a multitude of sins, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that when we pray that you hear us and that you will answer us. And we thank you for the manifestation of the word that has been released in this hour. My God people of God, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And if you are walking in a place of, of unforgiveness, if your heart is hardened, or if your heart, oh, yes, Holy Ghost, if you have a broken heart because someone that has rejected you or did not love you or did not give you the care that you needed, know that you yeah. have right now that the Holy Spirit is present and that he is able to heal you everywhere that you hurt. Oh, my God, today. Father God, I thank you for the release and breakthrough in this hour. Those that are suffering from heart, a break, a broken heart, Father God, or those that are suffering in relation to his loveless. Oh, Father God, let the spirit of the Lord touch the life and nature of you within them, Father God, and bring forth your love, your agape love, and let it manifest. Let them, Lord, walk in the fulfillment, the fulfillment of your purpose and your calling on their life in the name of Yeshua. Mm. Mm. As people of God, this word is, is just so rich, and I thank God for it. Amen. And it really creates a Sila moment. I, I wish that we didn't have audio issues that people can go back, and they can listen and glean some of it. We will be back. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. The woman of God will be back in the name of yes. Yeshua. Abba, oh, Abba yes. Father, I pray that you will fill this broadcast with your glory. Hallelujah. Yes. That who are under the sound of our voices now and later on on the rebroadcast yeah. will experience a great manifestation of your power and your presence. Touch the life and nature of God in them now, Father God. And thank you. And I decree that the change is taking place now. I want to say thank you again, woman of God, for stopping by. Thank God you to you. our listeners that are with us. God bless you. Oh, mm. a beautiful life, woman of God. The box Saturday loves you. Amen. You're going to be regular. I decree it. I declare it. I claim it. Thank you, Kimmy Kim and Elation Radio family. I am Fricker Radio. And you, our listening audience, again, we pray the Lord continue to bless you. Continue to enlarge your borders and territory in Jesus. Thank you for joining us this Saturday. Right.
my God, today. And we thank the Lord for what he's doing in the body, the mind, will, and the emotions of the man of God. I know that prayer works. Hallelujah. And it is well with him, woman of God. Hallelujah. Everyone, please come back next Saturday, 3 p.m. Standard Time, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Say, amen. For another Shabbat Saturday, this great station, Lace Radio. And again, thank you, Mikim, for your love and for your patience and for your care. Oh, my God. You are an woman of God. And thank you for your example. And I always say this for your heart. May the Lord God continue to use you greatly, woman of God. Now please thank close you. us out thank and you. alone, everyone. God bless you. We appreciate you. We look forward to being back with you when the Lord assigns us again. And we love you. Amen. Love you too. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless. Desperate for you, gotta have you, can't make it on my own, and I know I really need you, I'm really longing for you, really yearning for you, Holy Spirit, take my hand, I'll follow, Lord. to our 